Welcome back to another Raspberry Pi tutorial. In this one, I'm showing you how to do this with your Raspberry Pi. Controlling the LED is a great beginner project and it gets you started into the world of physical computing. Physical computing is basically using a computer or software and something else that interacts with the outside environment. So like connecting sensors to your Pi, connecting buttons to your Pi, or controlling outside things like LEDs. This is the first of a video series on GPIO pins for the Raspberry Pi, so if you like this one, stick around, subscribe, and you can get more in the future. First, what do you need? You're going to need a Raspberry Pi, an LED at the minimum. It's going to be pretty janky if that's all you have, so I recommend you'd also get two male-to-female connector cables, or female-to-male, whatever. A resistor, I have a 100 ohm, anything over 50 is okay, anything over 200 is going to make your LED really dim. And finally, a breadboard to keep things organized. What is a GPIO? What does GPIO stand for? It stands for General Purpose Input Output. So like I was saying before with the physical computing, it's input and output into your Raspberry Pi with no restrictions. How it works is these GPIO pins can give a voltage, but then they can also read voltage. And then there are a couple other pins that have different features. But right now, we're just focusing on the GPIO pins. If you look at your Raspberry Pi, it's these series of 40 pins that are just unlabeled. You don't really know what they are. So you can look at this chart that I have here. It'll show you what goes to what. Some of the older Pis don't have all 40 pins. If your Pi doesn't look like my Pi, then just Google whatever your Pi you have, GPIO pin pinout. Um, and that should give you a picture that's perfect for you. Let's set up our circuit and then we'll go from there. For setting up the circuit, first I'm going to explain how we use this, a breadboard. Bring in my multimeter here and put it on the beep setting. What that does is when I got the ends of the cable here and I touch them together, it makes a noise. You have a complete circuit when it makes a noise. So let's find out where on the breadboard things are connected. Within the middle two areas, the rows are connected. But if we go across the divide, they're not connected. But if I bring it back over here, they are connected. But now, the rows are not connected on the edge parts. In these, it's the column. Okay. And then this column. So basically, you put your positive into here and your negative into here. And then you can bring your circuit over into this area or this area. This breadboard makes it easier to prototype circuits so you don't have to do any soldering or have loose wires hanging around. Grab my Raspberry Pi. Put that. Oop, we're touching here. Okay, make sure you can see everything. I'm going to switch this over to a different setting. And what that setting does is it looks at voltages. I'm going to pull up my Raspberry Pi schematic again. And what do we want? We want to power on an LED. So to test that, I'm going to go in that pin 1 where it says 3.3 volt power. And then you can go into any pin that says ground. So I'm going to go into pin 9. 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay. And then let's use the breadboard. So this is my negative. I'm going to go into the negative column. And this red is my 3.3 volts positive. I'm going to go into the positive column. You can go anywhere you'd like. So now, if I take my voltage reader on the multimeter, hopefully you can see everything. And then I'm going to put the black which is my negative side, into the negative column, and then my red, which is the positive, into the positive column. 
And if you can see the multimeter, it's saying about 3.3 .3 volts are coming through. That's perfect. So we know it's working, and now let's use that to build the circuit for the LED. I have my 100 ohm resistor here. That's gonna be brown, black, brown for the color code. You can refer back to the color code chart I had earlier. And we're gonna just go from red into row 20. Uh, maybe we'll go over it a little bit. I'm just gonna go into row 25 there. Okay. And then take the LED. One thing we need to know about LEDs is they want the current to flow through it in a certain direction. So the negative has to go into a negative side and the positive has to go into the positive side. But then to do that, we need to know which is negative, which is positive on the LED. If you look here, one of the leads is shorter. The shorter lead on this side goes into the negative part, but longer is positive. Say the leads are about the same size, there's also gonna be a notch on the negative side. And I'll add a picture here showing a better example of the notch on the LED. So we want that to go into the negative, the shorter going into the negative. I'm gonna put that in there. And then I'm also gonna put it in row 25 next to the resistor. And as you can tell, the LED is on right now. If I take away the positive voltage, the LED goes off. I'm gonna put it back on, LED's on. So this is all our circuit is going to be. Just so you have a great understanding of what's happening here, we got 3.3 volts in pin one. That's going into this red column on the breadboard. The resistor is taking that 3.3 volts, bringing it over into that row 25, then giving it to the LED's positive side, and then the LED brings that positive side into the negative here. The negative column goes all the way back to this brown wire, and the brown wire comes to the Raspberry Pi into the ground where it connects back. So we have a complete and functioning circuit. To program this, we're not going to use the always on 3.3 volts, we're going to use GPIO pin 17. And all we have to do there is move from pin one to pin 11. One, three, five, seven, nine, 11. Right next to that ground pin, it should be the sixth pin down on the left side of those two columns of GPIO pins. Now on our computer, we want to use a program to control that Raspberry Pi rather than just putting it on and off on the 3.3 volt pin. And how do we do that? I'm SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi's terminal. If you're using your Raspberry Pi as a desktop, open a terminal, and then we'll all be at the same spot. From the terminal, let's type Python to get into a Python interpreter, and then import GPIO0. This comes pre-installed on all Raspberry Pi OS's. Now, we're going to create our LED object. LED equals GPIO0 dot L, in all caps, LED, and then that GPIO pin. If you remember from the pin layout, that's GPIO pin 17. Enter. And then all we gotta do to turn the LED on is type LED dot on. And now I'm gonna bring the Raspberry Pi up so you can see it. And then I'm gonna hit enter on this LED on. And it turns on. Now, how do we turn it off? It's just as intuitive. LED following the pattern dot off. And then the parentheses and the LED turns off. Very cool. Now what? Now say we want to make it flash a few times. I'm going to type quit to get out of the Python interpreter and we're going to make a Python program to run to make it flash a few times. So to make a new file, let's do sudo nano led flasher. Let's just do flash.py. Enter and this is going to create a new file, a new .py file called LED flash. 
in an interpreter called nano. Let's just do what we did before. We'll do it a little differently. I'll do from GPIO0 import LED. And we're also going to import time. Let's make a, our LED object like we did before. LED equals, now all we have to do is LED, whatever GPIO pin we're using. We're using 17. Enter. A for loop because we want to make a few times to make our LED flash for blank in range 5. Normally, it wouldn't be an underscore right here. You would put a variable name, and that would increment 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But because we're not going to be using that variable, we can do an underscore in Python to keep things cleaner. Push tab, LED dot on. Tab again time dot sleep let's sleep for half a second led dot off and then let's leave it off for half a second 0 0.5 and that's all that program will be control s to save it control x to exit out of it how do we run it python led flash dot pi and this will show up in your fire file explorer on your Raspberry Pi, this LED flash, in case you want to find it later. Let me grab the Raspberry Pi and the LED so you can see. Okay, and we should see five flashes. Two, three, four, five. Wow. It's just so exciting when things get connected like that. I'm going to open the shades now and that's it that's how we make an LED flash using our software program to control the Raspberry Pi to control the GPIO pin to control the LED as you can imagine there are so many options of things you can do using these GPIO pins and we've only shown the output version we can also do an input where it takes different voltages and does things with that and we're gonna show that with a button in the next video as always Leave comments if you have any questions or comments if you have requests for future videos and happy coding.